From Television City in Hollywood, the National Society for Crippled Children and Adults brings you this Easter Seal Teleparade of Stars with Jack Benny, Dick Contino, Bob Crosby, Ruth Hussey, Ann Jeffries, Dan Johnson, Kitty Callan, Liberace, Shirley MacLaine, The Modern Heirs, Jody O'Brien, Carol Richards, Robert Sterling, the music of Paul Barron, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ruth Hussey. Thank you, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you why we're putting on this Easter Seal Teleparade of Stars. All of us take so much for granted. If we want something, we step across the room and get it. Or we run outdoors to meet our friends. We never think how lucky we are to be able to move freely and to have strength and energy for the work and fun of the day. But there are thousands, yes, millions, who are not so lucky. And during this thoughtful period of the year, as we approach Easter, we, the lucky ones, pause to show our gratitude to our Maker and our compassion for others who are less fortunate on Crippled Children's Day throughout the land. The many friends of Crippled Children in Hollywood are joining in the Easter Seal Teleparade. And now I hope that you sitting at home with your children will join me and my children in watching some great entertainment. I'll turn the set on now, Ma. Fine. This is going to be a cool show. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> well, here are Bob Crosby and Joni O'Brien, Carol Richards, and the Modern Airs. <laughs> I'm as happy as can be. Jiminy Cricket, Jiminy Jack, you make my heart go a clickety clack. Tweedly, tweedly, tweedly dee. does it. Thank you, kids. Thank you, Mods. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have with us tonight the honorary mayor of Sherman Oaks, California. Now, he's not only active in civic affairs, but he plays a little piano on the side. And someone wrote a hillbilly song about him, and because, well, hillbilly numbers are not exactly in his line, he has asked a real hillbilly to appear with him. So here he is, Liberace, assisted by his brother, George. Hey, Liberace, 
Liberace, I'd like to know where you got that smile. Hey, Liberace, you must have a winning style. Since you have been on TV, my wife won't speak to me. And her dreams is Liberace, oh, what you've done to me. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen me on television or heard any of my radio shows or have seen me in the movies, I would like to identify myself. I'm Jackie Gleason. <laughs> my diet ran away with me. Uh, but you know, ladies and gentlemen, I was just listening to Bob Crosby and what he said about Liberace is true. He is the honorary mayor of Sherman Oaks. You see, he lives there. He has a beautiful home. Oh, it's a fantastic place. And in his backyard, he has a swimming pool shaped like a grand piano. Oh, it's magnificent. In fact, I get a thrill every week when I go there to clean it. <laughs> See, I'm in the business now of cleaning swimming pools, and it's very profitable because, well, everyone in Hollywood or Beverly Hills has a swimming pool. Now, Roy Rogers has one in the shape of a uh, cowboy hat, you see? And uh, Jack Webb has one shaped like a, uh, a policeman's badge. And then there's a fellow who lives down the street from me. He has a kidney-shaped pool. He's the uh, producer of the medic program. <laughs> but I'm very happy, really, to be here for this Easter Seal program, because it's quite exciting, anyway, around Easter time, particularly for the children, because this is when they all go on their Easter hunt, you know, Easter egg hunt. And the most popular one, of course, is the Easter egg hunt on the lawn of the White House. The, um, course, <laughs> last year, though, it was uh, kind of sad, because... There was a little boy about nine years old who almost won. He came in with 58 eggs, but he was disqualified because uh, 27 of them were golf balls. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't go near the White House lawn this year. Anyway, a squirrel might bite me. <laughs> 
But um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, now that you know who I am, I, uh, I would like to... Wish, I think we ought to get on with the show, and I would like to present to you now a very, very charming and very talented singer of popular songs, Miss Kitty Callan. <laughs> Kitty, I can't tell you how very happy I am that you're on this show with us. Thank you. What, are you, what, what number are you going to do? Well, Jack, I'd like to sing Kitty Who. Kitty Who. Is that about you, the song? <laughs> no, not huh? exactly. It can be sung by any girl. Oh. Peggy Who. Oh, this is... Wait a minute. This is the song that you recorded for Decca, isn't it? And I understand that you uh, are donating the proceeds of the first 100,000 records for the Crippled Children's Society. That's isn't right, it? Jack. Well, that's wonderful. Of course, you know, I made a record, too. I made a violin solo, had a violin solo on, on a record, and uh, I donated the proceeds of all of the records to a charity. Oh? Mm -hmm. How many copies did it sell? One. <laughs> Rochester bought it. <laughs> Mary gave him the money. <laughs> well, I'm sure, Kitty, that uh, your record will certainly outsell mine, and it'll be wonderful for the society. Let's hear it. Kitty Woo, Kitty Woo, Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Woo. Kitty Jones, Kitty Smith, Kitty Brown. Someday I'll be wet in a white satin gown. Kitty Jones, Kitty Brown, Kitty Smith. I'm wondering who I'll be standing there with. Kitty who, Kitty what, Kitty where. I dream he'll be handsome and clever and rich, but they say when I kiss him and fall, I'll just want to be Kitty, any name at all. Thank you, Miss Kitty Callan. And now, the Easter Seal Teleparade of Stars takes you to the living room of Robert Sterling and his lovely wife, Anne Jeffries. What happened? That child of yours. Mine? <laughs> Ours. I turned my back with just two seconds to answer the phone, and Clancy Lord the boom. <laughs> he, he pulled the flowers off, and he broke the lamp. Honey, believe me, there are plenty more lamps where this came from. <laughs> Let's just be grateful that our little Jeff can crawl wherever he wants to. You know, I was talking to one of the men on the set today, and he was telling me about his little guy. 
two years old and can't even stand up. Oh, my. And they've had surgery. Now it's up to time, aftercare, daily exercise, and training under an expert at Easter Seal Center. Those Easter Seal Centers do such wonderful work. Mm -hmm. And their doors are open to all crippled children, no matter what caused their handicap. Well, they take this little guy twice a week for treatment. You know, they have skilled physical therapists that work right under doctor's direction and exercise the right muscles and show them exactly what to do at home. Well, they'd be desperate without Easter Seal Center help and encouragement. Listen, and you're talking about just one child. You know, I read that last year Easter Seals gave care and treatment to over 100,000 children. Friends, that means that these children have a chance for a new life and hope when you and I help through Easter Seals. Now on Cripple Children's Day, as we enter into Easter week, let's count our blessings and offer under the least of these the child who can't run and play like other children. The hope that through our support of Easter Seals, he has a chance for a new life, a better life. Yes, let's count our blessings. And gratitude for our children who have freedom of body, give to these others in the true spirit of Easter. Through Easter Seals, or send your help directly to Cripple Children in care of your local post office. Thank you. Thank you, Ann Jeffries and Robert Sterling. And now, ladies and gentlemen, America's Mr. Accordion, Dick Contino. Thanks, Don. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real privilege being able to appear on this Easter Seals Teleparade of Stars. And for my contribution, if I may, I'd like to play an old favorite of mine, Midnight in Paris. Thank you, Dick Contino. You know, I love accordion music. And we have in our orchestra a young fellow by the name of Frank Remley, who plays the accordion and the guitar. And he likes the accordion even better than the guitar because he not only gets music out of it, but he can crush grapes at the same time. <laughs> That's our boy, Remley. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you one of the truly great stars of the motion picture industry. And I'm very happy to be able to say that both he and I have been considered for the same parts in many, many movies, and we have still remained friends. <laughs> and here he is, Van Johnson. How are you, Jack? Fine. Well, so the rivals meet, eh? <laughs> rivals? Jack, what did you mean when you said that you and I were considered for the same parts and pictures? Well, 
Were you considered for the part that I played in the Kane Mutiny? The Kane Mutiny? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> no, not for the Kane Mutiny. Well, what about the part that I played in uh, The Last Time I Saw Paris? Were you considered for that? The Last Time I Saw Paris? No, no, not that one. <laughs> well, uh, what about Brigadoon, Jack? Were you considered for that part? Brigadoon? The movie or the play? The movie. No, no, I wasn't considered for that. Oh, you were considered for the play? No, no. <laughs> well, uh, Jack, I've been mentioning all the parts that I've played, and you haven't considered uh, any of them. What did you mean? What did I mean? What? Let me ask you something. Were you considered for my part in The Horn Blows at Midnight? <laughs> Well, as long as we're even, let's drop the subject. <laughs> but by the way, Van, I want to say it was really awfully nice of you to come over here and donate your services tonight for this very worthy cause. But, you know, I just thought of something. What? You know, you've never been a guest on my television show. And I was just thinking, how about coming on my next one as a guest? Please, Jack, one benefit at a time. <laughs> Well, no, no, Van. I, I intend to pay you. Oh, you do, eh? Well, what about that radio show I did for you three years ago? You never did pay me for that. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to rush, you know. It hasn't been settled yet. Whatever the judge says, you'll get. <laughs> well, I hope so. You know, my lawyer is Jerry Giesler. Jerry Giesler? Why did you need such a good lawyer? Because this could turn into a murder case. <laughs> Oh, well, if you're going to get emotional about it, I mean, forget it. <laughs> but you know, Van, I haven't seen you in such a long time. It's really nice seeing you again. I'm just wondering, maybe tonight after the show, you and I ought to go out and have dinner together. And I'll call up a couple of girls and we'll, you know, we'll go on a double date. Oh, no, Jack. I'm not going out on any more double dates with you. The girls you brought along the last time we went out. Oh, brother. Well, what was wrong with them? These girls were in show business and they were very clever. They sure were. Every time I went like this, they jumped through my arms. <laughs> well, they probably thought you wanted to dance. <laughs> well, Jack, let's forget about the date, and if you don't mind, I've got something I'd like to say to the audience. Okay. Go right ahead, then. See you tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yes, that's the day you clean my pool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, well, I made a note of it. And not so much chlorine this time, Jack. It's fading my freckles. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was given something to read to you, asking for your support of the Easter Seal campaign. But I don't think I need a prepared speech after visiting the rehabilitation centers the National Society for Crippled Children and Adults have. These are open for your inspection, too. And after visiting them, you will see where your dollars go. So please send your contributions to crippled children in care of your local post office. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce to you one of Hollywood's brightest new stars, Miss Shirley MacLaine. What are you going to sing, Shirley? Well, I thought I'd do a little number called It's Me. Well, grammatically, that's not correct, Shirley. It, it should be it's I. Oh, no. According to Rogers and Hammerstein, it's me. Oh, well, I can't argue with those guys. Go to it, Shirley. I'm colorless and shy, inhibited and dull. My entrance into any room is followed by a low. This droopiness in me miraculously melts when I step on a stage and make believe I'm someone else. Quite suddenly, I'm mentally and physically equipped with most unusual qualities. It says so in the script. Delectable dame, cool as cream and hotter than flame. Who, who could it be? It's me, it's me, it's me. Who's that queenly gift 
to the boys, always keen and lousy with toys. Who, who could it be? It's me, it's me, it's me. When the authors make me say words that make me wittier, I feel just as smart as they, and what's more, I'm prettier. Who's that babe who's getting the wows? Who's that dame who's taking the bows? In a daze, I wonder who is she? Imagine my surprise when once I realize Well, it's nobody else but wonderful, beautiful me You know, it's just awful. I finish a great performance and I run next door to the restaurant and I... Well, let me tell you what happens. My picture hangs in sardines for all the world to see. I sit beneath my picture there and no one looks at me. Sometimes I wear dark glasses concealing who I am. Then all at once I'll take them off. And no one gives a... <laughs> but when I start to play a part, I play the part okay. No longer am I no one when I'm someone in a play. Who has learned the formula which satisfies the seven-year itch? Ladies and gentlemen, among the many things we love about small children is their completely trusting dependence on us. But do we love crippled children less because their dependence on us is even greater? Before you answer, let me ask you, have you ever known, really known, I mean, a crippled child? If you have, you will say we love them more because you will know that there's no courage, patience, or cheerful, persistent effort more deserving of help than that of a crippled youngster. And you know, too, that the work of the Easter Seal Societies on behalf of the crippled can only continue through your support. Today, Crippled Children's Day, let's show the crippled children of our country how much we love them. Let's all send Easter dollars to crippled children, care of your local post office. Thank you very much. gentlemen, we wish to thank all the stars who have given of their time and talent to the Easter Seal Teleparade of Stars. We express appreciation to the American Federation of Musicians and the Hollywood Coordinating Committee for their assistance, and our appreciation to CBS for full facilities and time. Shirley MacLaine may soon be seen in the new Hal Wallace picture, Artists and Models. If you have not already made your Easter Seal contribution, send it today to the Easter Seal Society in your community, or to Crippled Children Care of your local post office. Thank you.